it's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum. And I'm all out of gum. Next up, we have an FPS game to review today. And it's not Call of Duty or Battlefield, but rather Iron Fury. A game released on August 15, 2019, developed by Voidpoint and published by 3D Realms. You know who made the amazing game known as Duke Nuke 3D and Shadow Warrior? Anyways, let's find out if Iron Fury is just as good as these build engine games like Duke Nuke 3D or Blood, or is it a dumpster fire of a game? So let's find out. The story of Iron Fury is actually a prequel to the story of Bombshell, a game that was released in 2016 and it was meh. But anyway, Shelly Harrison, a bomb disposal expert aligned to the Global Defense Force, must stop the evil forces of Dr. Jada's ex cult, who, you guessed it, is a cultist leader who unleashes an army of cybernetically enhanced soldiers on the futuristic dystopian city of Neo DC, and Shelly must stop this bastard at any cost. So basically, the premise is just like that. For me, I didn't care about the plot of the game, since retro FPS games like Doom, Duke Nukem 3D, and Blood usually don't rely on the story to be good. These games are good because of their great fast-paced gameplay that never gets old even to this day. So how good is the gameplay of Iron Fury actually? Two words, pretty good. As a matter of fact, it's just as good as the other build engine games, and that's a good sign. But to understand why it's good, let's talk about everything and let's begin with the weapons. So, what do I think about the weapons? They are pretty good, and each of these weapons feel pretty distinct. They are pretty powerful. They sound great, and they are useful in every situation, and very satisfying to use. You have the Lover Boy, one of my favorite starter weapons in any retro FPS game, has the ability to lock on targets, which is pretty useful at early game, a shotgun with two fire modes, two machine guns that can set enemies on fire, and an iron bow that can be devastating against stronger enemies. Bowling bombs that can act as a homing weapon, cluster pucks that detonate upon impact, and it's very satisfying to use. And last but not least, the chain gun, which acts much like the other chain guns you will see in older FPS games. Each weapon feels pretty distinct from one another, and they are fun to use. One thing that I still wish Iron Fury had is a rocket launcher. Granted, we do have a grenade launcher in the game, but I still believe that a rocket launcher would be a dope as heck, but that's just me. So, moving on. As for enemies, while well, some of the enemies, like cultists, can be killed with only 1-2 to two shots from any weapon you use, there are no pushovers either. While not as cruel like the enemies in Blood, they can still be a challenge. Namely enemies like the Deacon or the Skin Jobs, they can be pretty tough to kill. However, some of the enemies have weakness, for instance, the Deacons can be neutralized with the charged Ion Shots with an Ion Bow, or even the Wendigos can be headshot with the Ion Bow. Then you have the Liberators, who can be deadly if you don't know what you're doing. Since there are two versions of the Liberators, the green camel pants who fire buckshot shells, whereas the Liberators who wear blue pants fire grenade shells, and these enemies are much more dangerous than the green ones, since they deal heavy damage, if you don't have armor. The drones are similar to the Sentry drones from Duke Nukem 3D, but this time around, these drones are not as dangerous compared to the Sentry drones. At least they don't explode on contact, but however, they are armed with long-range projectiles which yield splash damage. The Decon is a much more dangerous version of the drone, since they are armed with long-range homing projectiles fired at a rapid rate that deal heavy damage to the player. And they are heavily armored, but like I mentioned before, they do have a weakness. For example, if you neutralize them with a the charged iron shot, they stand no chance against you. The skin job kinda looks like a terminator with muscle tissues, but don't underestimate this bad boy, as it's pretty dangerous to fight against it. They can teleport, remaining invisible for a brief moment, and also fire projectiles that deal heavy splash damage. Even if you defeat them, they can still retaliate you by self-destructing. You see, when you defeat a skin job, it enters in a crouching pose and then explodes, dealing at splash damage. So, if you see them in that pose, just run away as fast as you can. Wendigos are total pricks as they leap towards you and dealing heavy damage to the player. They are pretty much similar to the fiends from Quake, and in that regard, they are pretty dangerous. However, while they are durable, the Iron Bow is their weakness, as a few headshots can kill these sons of bitches. Diopedes are metal insects that are not that dangerous, as they can be blown to bits with a bowling ball. At some points in the game, you come across some bosses, which can be tough at first, but if you know what you're doing, they're not that hard. 
Except for the final boss. Oh boy, the final boss was tough as fuck. Especially on the Maximum Fury difficulty. Since Eskal sends out multiple hordes of enemies, in the last level you have to drop bombs on him and you have to kill these monsters otherwise you'll get overwhelmed and you're gonna die a lot. The difficulty in Iron Fury is hard, much harder than Duke Nukem 3D but not as hardcore as in Blood. I had plenty of deaths, no doubt about that, but it's still very satisfying nonetheless. I played the game on the Maximum Fury difficulty, which is the highest difficulty in the game. The enemies are no pushovers by any means, meaning if you die to an enemy, it's mostly, suddenly, your fault. However, while the enemies are really strong, so is your weapons. In the end, it all comes down to skill and knowledge. So what I'm basically saying is, if you want to beat this game, get good or go home. The controls are pretty snappy as well, since I play this game with the keyboard and mouse which is the best way to play this hard, fast-paced game, and while you can play with the controller, it's not in my opinion the most viable way to play the game, but that's my personal opinion. The gameplay is pretty responsive and accurate, and being able to headshot cultists is pretty fun to do, and I didn't expect that in a build engine game no less. What about the level design? Iron Fury has 7 zones. The first 4 zones has 5 levels, whereas the remaining 3 has either 2 to 3 levels. Every level feels pretty distinct from each other, and there's a lot of references. For example, the fourth level of the first zone, there's a Tetris reference, which is pretty cool. And there are so many references, so many that I've lost count. Even I played this game so many times, and I still yet to find all the secrets in the game. Hell, there's even a secret level, but I can't show you. You just have to figure it out for yourself. The level design is extremely top-notch for a build engine game. It is easily one of the best. I mean, if these levels were in Duke Nukem 3D or Blood at the time where these games were released in the 90s, they would fry PCs in that era for a long time. Voidpoint knew what they were doing. They pushed the build engine to its absolute limits and it shows. And I dare to say that the level design on Iron Fury is actually much better than Duke Nukem 3D's levels. That's not to say that the levels in Duke Nukem 3D were bad. They were pretty memorable and pretty great but the levels in Iron Fury are much more detailed and more complex. Also, like in other built engine games, there's a lot of interactions in every level. For instance, you could drink cans, eat some pizza, play some mini games, or even playing a piano, which if you play the right notes, you get something nice. But I can tell you, you have to see it yourself. So, in a nutshell, Iron Fury has a lot of Duke Nukem 3D's DNA scattered around, and it clearly shows. You can beat this game in between 7 to 9 hours, but if you're going for all the secrets, it might take much more than that. It's also worth mentioning that there's an extra campaign, for instance. You can play the preview campaign, which is pretty interesting for historical reasons, since that campaign was included in the early access version of the game. And a new mode called Queen of the Hill, which is basically a survival mode, to put it bluntly. And it's a pretty fun mode to play. The replayability is pretty high in this game, and I love it. The experience is always different every time I play this game time and time again. The game also has Steam achievements, and I have yet to obtain them all, but I'm pretty pleased with the results, although I'm not done with the achievements, but I can obtain them all. I mean, after all, I got all the achievements in Blood and in Cuphead as well, so it's a matter of time. Iron Fury uses the built engine. You know, the engine that was used in Duke Nukem 3D, Blood and Shadow Warrior. So how good are the graphics? Well, for a build engine game, I'd say that it's pretty good. The textures, the atmosphere, the shadows, and the lightning are pretty outstanding. As you can see, compared to the graphics of Duke Nukem 3D to Iron Fury, you can definitely tell the quality of life improvements when it comes to the graphics. Now, don't get me wrong, Duke Nukem 3D graphics are still pretty good, it's just Iron Fury graphical qualities are just a tad bit higher than Duke Nukem 3D's graphics. But what about the performance? Well, Iron Fury runs solid on my rig as well as on my laptop. I ran this game on a PC with an i5 4690K and a GTX 1060 and I gotta say it runs pretty well. On my laptop, an i7 9750H with a GTX 6050, same thing as well. However, on the Switch version, it runs at 30 frames per second, which is pretty below average for a fast-paced shooter like Iron Fury. Granted, the Switch version does have a 60 frames per second code, but why not just set the 60 frames per second mode as a default on the Switch? Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the Konami code easter egg, but we've seen that the Switch is capable of doing 60 frames per second in the game, so what's the point of that code? Why not just put it as an option instead of that? 
Nonetheless, the developers said that they are trying to fix the issues on the Switch version, so only time will tell when we'll see improvements for the Switch version. But overall, the graphics in Iron Fury are pretty good, and it does make the build engine justice. The soundtrack of Iron Fury was composed by Zarko Rostin, and I gotta say the soundtrack is superb. Here, listen. Jarko Rossin pre-nailed the theme of the game. The soundtrack packs a lot of adrenaline and it shows. The main character, Shelly Harrison, is voiced by Valerie Michelle Aram, who also did some voice acting in games like Metro Exodus, Catherine Full Body, and Call of Duty Black Ops. And I gotta say that she did a pretty good job voicing her. Here is some of her voice lines in the game. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. State of the art, bang bang. Fire in the hole, assholes. This is my boomstick. This is my boomstick. Where does he get these wonderful toys? Oh, what is this? Heskel's House of Horrors? I am the one who knocks. Isn't this a bit, uh, excessive? Say my name. We're done when I say we're done. Dr. Heskel is voiced by John St. John, who, surprise, surprise, also voiced Duke Nukem and also Big the Cat from Sonic Adventure. You see why I feel like this game has a lot of Duke Nukem 3D's DNA? This is a public service announcement. Return to your homes or face death. We are taking over this town. Sit down, little girl. This is your final warning. Despite all your rage, you are still just a rat in a cage. I will ensure your demise. The sound effects are pretty top-notch. The weapon sound effects are pretty satisfying to hear, and the ambient sounds are great as well as the enemy noises and so on. Overall, the sound department is pretty damn amazing. In conclusion, Iron Fury is pretty much a love letter to build engine fans, who wanted a new build engine game since Shadow Warrior and Blood. I personally consider Iron Fury the game that started the build engine renaissance, since the build engine had a dark age with games like Extreme Paint Roll and World War II GI, and by extension, Redneck Rampage. The gameplay, the graphics, the feel, and the enjoyment are pretty damn great. This game is what Duke Nukem Forever should have been, which is pretty obvious given this game has a lot of Duke Nukem 3D DNA, and I had a lot of fun playing this game. So much so that I spent 50 hours in this game and I still haven't found all the secrets in the game. God, this game is so awesome. Overall, Iron Fury is an outstanding game, and if Voidpoint ever decides to make an expansion pack for the game, then I have no doubt that we will meet Shelly again in her next adventure. So if you haven't bought this game, buy it now. It's worth 25 euros or dollars, and you will not be disappointed. All hail Build Engine! Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos. And I'll see you guys next time.